Gospel of Luke chapter 9. We're going to finish up this morning our series on solid and family. Solid and family. If you're just coming in and have missed the first two messages, you want to be sure to get online, get on our Facebook page, and check out those messages. They will bless your heart. And uh, prove to be an amazing thing for you. Carlos, can you um, grab me a bottle of water from down in the fridge? I appreciate it. Luke chapter 9. We're going to catch up the story in verse 57, highlighting what our foundational passage for solid and family has been. Verse 58. But we'll end the reading at 62. When you're there, say amen. amen. If you're not there, say wait. Okay. Praise God. Let's read. The Bible says this, that as they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. And Jesus said to him, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Verse 58, and Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Heavenly Father, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus to empower me by your spirit to be able to communicate this message. I ask you to give ears to the listeners. God, that we would put application to that which we understand. Lord, I pray a blessing over every home, every family within the sound of my voice right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to sit under the instruction and the anointing of God's word. And I ask you, Lord God, to have your way today in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. I'm going to ask you for a little bit of engagement this morning. So if anybody has a cell phone, if you wouldn't mind taking that out for me. Need one person, not the entire church, but one person to set the alarm for 25 minutes. Not everybody. I see you all out there. All right, Pastor, you gave me 25 minutes. Set that thing for 25 minutes. I appreciate it. Set it on an alarm so I can hear it. And I need somebody to throw. Anybody throw real good? AJ, you play baseball right here. When that alarm goes off, I want you to throw this bottle at me, okay? <laughs> that means my time is up, okay? Can you do that? Good. <laughs> Let's get into this this morning. I want to talk to you this morning about provision for your home, making provision for your home. Um, Again, the, the title really of the series is Solid in Family, and uh, we've spent the last two weeks discussing this aspect. Uh, we talked a little bit last week in conclusion about how men talk in sign language, right? Women need to talk. Men talk in sign language. Let me illustrate real quick for you how men talk in sign language. If I like you, I'm going to come over to you, and I'm going to either give you a nice pat on the shoulder, that means I like you. But if I really like you, stand up for a second, Eric. But if I really like you, I'm going to do one of these and one of these. <laughs> right? That's how we do. That works. You know? Maybe at the first interaction, we go like this. What's up, man? How you doing? You good? All right. Good. It'd be really weird if I came to Eric and said, yo, man, I really like you, bro. <laughs> 
you know, I, I like your style, you know, I like the things that you like. It would be really awkward for a man to do that. For women, it's a little bit easier, but for men, it's kind of like awkward. So we talk in sign language. That's how we talk. You cannot bring sign language into your home and expect your spouse to respond to sign language. Your spouse needs to talk. Doesn't matter what they talk about. They can talk about the, the, the dishwasher, the, you know, the problem with the paint. They can talk about the carpet stain. They can talk about the kids. They talk about 50 million things in like two seconds. But it doesn't really matter. They just need to talk. And we need to be in tune to what they're talking about. Not tapped out and moved to the side and like, okay, when is this going to be over type of thing. Rolling the eyes. You know what I mean, guys? Okay? You know what I mean, ladies? Right? You guys need to talk, right? Women need to talk. Men need to listen. <laughs> All right? Um, you see, the problem is this, is that when signals start to get missed in the home, whether it's by verbal or whether it's by sign language, the problem is this, is that there is a, an emotional abandonment that begins to happen in the house. We tap out emotionally. Oh, they're not responding the way that I think they should respond, so I'm tapping out. And so once this happens, if you don't nip it in the butt right away, it begins to become a problem, and then there comes separation. Separation comes, then there comes the potential for divorce. This is why God said, I hate divorce. Let me give you this, this, this statistic is this, currently, 78% of Christian households of marriages are ending in divorce today. 77% of non-believing Christians are ending in divorce today. We got them beat by 1%. That's a problem. There's an emotional abandonment happening in the home. Tapped out because we can't figure out one another. We're being pulled here, pulled there, pulled here, pulled there, pulled this way, tapped into this device, tapped into that thing, entertainment off the chart, kids in sports, and boom, 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 and then we all are just tapped out. We're a limited resource. I'll get to that a little bit later, you know. When, when we begin to, to unravel the reality that we don't know what we're expecting from one another anymore, when that starts to settle in, we don't know what your expectation is or what your expectation is, what happens here is we start critiquing the relationship rather than investing in the relationship. And so that's a problem. We ought not to be critiquing each other we need to be investing into each other. This is, this is the process of which God ordained happened way back in the garden. Before he set the blueprint for the temple and laid out the structure of the tabernacle, before he filled it with the, with the symbols, before he, he sent his son to die on the cross and to establish the church of Jesus Christ, the first thing that he established was family. The first thing that he established was family. That's why it's important. That's why he says, I hate divorce. I hate it. You see, when your house is miserable, it is hard to be faithful and committed to that which is painful. Amen? I want to give you three things this morning to build your family. Number one is economic support. Number one is economic support. You see, nobody wants to talk about um, life insurance, especially if you're a new newlywed couple, you don't want to talk about life insurance right off the bat. You want to talk about honeymoon stuff right off the bat. You know, you want to live in the, in the glory of your relationship for some time before you sit down and start having conversations about uh, life insurance and what are we going to do with our kids if this happens. And you want to have those hard-nosed conversations right off the bat. Those, those are things that we fear. And so we prolong them and we put them off and say, no, we're good, we're healthy, we're strong, we're vibrant. Listen, anything can happen at any moment in time. Are we prepared? Right? And so uh, we need to take care of those things. What is ours and what is worse than that? Right? Um, we need economic support. The reality is this. We can never pray away our need for stuff. We all need stuff. We need food. We need house, we need clothing, 
We need stuff, right? There's a difference. You cannot pray away spiritual solutions over our practical need, right? They don't, it doesn't happen that way. You cannot fix a physical problem with a spiritual solution. I told this in the, in the 830 service, but more of Jesus doesn't make me more of a husband. More of Jesus makes me more like him, and then I desire to be a husband. More of Jesus doesn't make you more of a wife. But when you have more of Jesus, then you're able to be a wife. More of Jesus doesn't make my kids obedient. <laughs> them responding to correction and them growing in their relationship with Jesus makes them more obedient. There has to be this correction process. And so we need economic support. We can't do that. First Timothy 5, 7, if you have your Bibles, turn there real quick. Let me read this passage of Scripture to you. First Timothy 5, 7. This is going to blow your mind. Say, I'm ready for my mind to be blown away. 1 Timothy 5, 7. Is the key verse, but I'm going to scoot over to verse 3 just for the sake of context to bring you into what we're talking about. The Bible says, Honor widows who are truly widows. But if a widow has children or grandchildren, let them first learn to show godliness to their own household and to make some return to their parents. That was a good shouting moment for grandparents in the house today. There's a return coming your way. <laughs> for this is pleasing in the sight of God. In verse 5 says, she who is truly a widow, left all alone, has set her hope on God and continues in supplications and prayers night and day. But she who is self-indulgent is dead even while she lives. Verse 7. Command these things as well so that they may be without reproach. But if anyone does not provide for his relatives and especially for the members of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Oh my gosh. An unbeliever here is also rendered, in some versions, maybe out there, but it's called an infidel. You know that word well from ISIS and Islamic terrorism. They call us infidels, right? An infidel is someone who has not trusted they have not trusted. But even worse than that is one who has trusted at one point and then turned away. And the Bible says that you are worse than an infidel if you do not take care of your household. I'm talking about provision this morning, providing for your household. Whether you have children or don't have children or preparing to have children, your household has to be in order. Christian households got to get in order. They got to get cleaned up. They really do. Household, you have to take care of your household. If you do not provide for your own house, then you have denied the faith is what the Bible says. I didn't say it. So the pressure's off me. The pressure's on the one who did say it. He said, if you do not provide for your own house and take care of your relatives, then you've denied the faith. And all that, blessed be the name of the Lord, clapping and dancing and singing and shouting. And, you know, here comes Elijah riding on the clouds, and you're singing, blessed be the name of the Lord, and your household is going to hell. All hell is breaking loose in your house says, if you don't provide for your household, if you don't take care of what's inside your house first, you're worse than an infidel. See, the purest form of the term is that you've rejected the truth. That's the purest form, is that the truth has been rejected. In the Word of God, when you have had uh, the opportunity to respond, you rejected it. Here it is right here. Okay, we got to take care of our widows, we got to take care of our relatives, we got to take care of our household, or else I'm denying the faith, and that's worse than an unbeliever. Good night right there. Birds take care of their own, monkeys take care of their own, 
The jungle takes care of their own. I've seen on African safaris where lions take care of their own. Hippos run together. Zebras go together. If they can take care of their own, how come we can't take care of our own? And we got lost prodigals, lost sons, lost daughters, a, a, a broken relationship between husband and wife. If the animals can get it together, why can't we get it together? I don't think that that statistic is in a, in a jungle, 78% of them getting divorced. Last time I checked, they all run together. Fish swarm together. They move together. They migrate together. They go wherever they want. They, they, the, the birds of the air, they form that V formation. They fly together. When one gets tired, he takes to the back row. The next bird moves up, and he starts taking lead. It's real quiet in here today. Infidelity, the root word infidel, primary meaning is rejected. You feel rejected. You know why you feel like you're rejected? Because you didn't get the signal. We talked about the signal last week. The signal. What's the signal? I'm doing sign language. You're trying to talk, and we're missing the signals. The signals are crossing. We're not getting them. The kids aren't getting them. The parents aren't getting them. And there's missed signals. And so how do you break the infidelity? When we each start living up to the expectations in the house, then there is no abandonment. And if we are not abandoned, then there is no fake love. There's no opportunity for fake love to exist. So the handouts have to stop. stop. And we have to start living and start investing into the lives of those that are in our households. Spend time with our kids, no matter what it looks like. Yep, okay, I really don't want to play PlayStation, but I'm going to play just because my son wants to play. Because it's time to him. It's not about the game, it's about him. We talked about that last week too. It's not about the game. It's about him. It's about you. No, I really don't want to watch This Is Us. But if that's time with her, that's time with her. I might be on my phone watching some sports stuff, but I'm going to be there. And I'm just kidding, baby. Jeez, look at me like that. It's not about monetary assets in life. It really isn't. We'll, we'll, I mean, look at what the destruction of these hurricanes have brought upon islands in the Caribbean and what's happening right now in Florida. You know, it's not a, we have to understand that it's not about monetary assets. Those things in this world, those things that we get, the cars and, and the boats and all that good stuff that we get to enjoy for a moment's time, it could be gone tomorrow. But those things can be replaced. Lives can never be replaced. They can't be replaced. So we need to invest more into people than we do into things. You getting this this morning? You know, I get the sense that there are many homes that are occupied with parents who are there, but they're not there. And so you're living life like it's golden, but it's not solid. We need solid Christian families in America today. And if it's not grounded, it's going to do something that the Bible tells us it's going to blow away because it's built on the sand, not on a rock. Our homes have to be built on the rock of Jesus Christ. Amen? Emotionally, physically, mentally, generationally, right? All these things. It's got to be built this way. Number two is social support. If you're taking notes, social support. Economic support was one. Number two is social support. Your family needs social support, not social media, social support. Discussion, interaction, talking. We don't get this in this generation. We get this in this generation. Room to room, field to field, car to car, pull up, text, 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 boom, boom, boom. Snapchat, bang, boom. Taking this, taking that, read this, read that. I got you. There's none of this anymore. We need this, social support. You come in and you see the carpet that's laid before you. But what you don't realize is what's under this carpet is concrete. The concrete is what gives stability and support to the laying of this carpet. It's the same thing in our homes, right? Same exact thing. I believe God has a message for you this morning. Because we're entering into a new season. We're in a new season. We're in a new level right now. And God has a message for you. You're personally going to a new level. You're going into a new season. And for the level that you're going into, 
you're going you're gonna to need some support. If you don't have the support, don't go to the next level. If you don't have the support of your spouse, don't go to the next level. If you don't have the support of your children, don't go to the next level. Have you included them in the discussions around the table before you make the decision to go to the next level? Because maybe they're not prepared to go there. Two years ago, we sat around talking about two services. We talked. We had it out. We hashed it out. Six months, eight months, nine months. Guess what? We weren't ready. Pull the plug. It's all right. In God's timing. God's timing is perfect in all things. You have to have social support in everything that you do. Jobs that you change, careers that you want to move, careers that you want to enter, education, how many children you want, how many children you don't want. Next level. Everything in life is next level. What are we going to do next? I know the plan that I have for First Assembly five to seven years from now, but I can't tell you that plan right now. Socially, we're not there yet, but I can give you chunks and I can give you blasts and bursts of knowledge that God has downloaded into my heart and spirit. Right now, I know that we need to be in two services. Socially, we have support there. Team, we have support there. We have brought around people to bring support around that process to get us to where we are today. Tomorrow is a new day. We start dreaming. We start thinking about what's on the horizon. Yes, amen. I got one African amen in the whole house. You need support. We can't be the only... Let me just talk to the men real quick. We can't be the only sane voice in the house. Women have a voice. The wives have a voice. The children have a voice. Are you listening to what your children are saying? Are you including them in the process of what you're going to do next? They want to be included. When me and Dina brought Dominic into the house uh, a year and a half ago, two years ago, heroin addicted baby, brought him in, and we had the conversation with our then six, eight, and ten-year-old. How do you guys feel about having another brother in the house? We wanted to know, engage what they felt. Because it was important to them. Little Johnny wasn't going to be little Johnny anymore. It was going to be little Dommy. Are you okay with that? We included them in the whole conversation leading up to the time that Dominic transitioned back to his mom. Just want to get you guys ready that in a couple months from now, Dominic's going to be leaving the house. Preparation for the next level, the next change in life. Support system. Socially connecting with your family, with your household, with your relatives, so that you can go to the next level together. There's so much more power in that. And listen, you have to be able to do it in small groups. A large group won't work for your next level. You have to get around you limited people. Maximum resources, but limited people. Jesus taught us that principle. He spoke to large crowds, and he delivered teachings to multitudes of people. But he called 12 to his side. He called 12 to his side that would become his disciples, but out of those 12, three were the closest to him. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm trying to get into your heart, is that you just need social support in whatever plans you're doing in life, whatever it is. All right? Provision is not just money, it's time, it's energy, it's affection. Nothing that you will have run right will just you. You have to have more of you, and you can't expect to find everyone's situation. You can't expect to, to fill every need that's out there. You are just a limited resource. I am a limited resource. I cannot take care of everybody's needs, but I can bring you to the one that can deliver you every need of yours. That's it. It takes a lot of pressure off of your life. You can't. You can't do it mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. You are incapable of fixing everybody's problems. You can't do it. You can't. And neither should you do it. You should help them, yes. But be careful of the emotional place that you put yourself into when you start doing those things. The reality is this, is that you cannot be a married woman 
who runs around with unmarried people. You can't do it. It won't last long. You cannot be a married man and start hanging out with single dudes. It won't work. It doesn't run. It's actually out of vision for where God has brought you into. He's brought you into a vision of a married life. That's it. That's the reality. Because the moment the conversation becomes un, un, unedifying, you will be talked out of the relationship that you coveted before God. Oh, things are going bad. Just get out, man. Oh, things are going sour. Yo, girl, I got someone else over here. Tired, weary. This, you know, th- th- these are the things that are hard to talk about. But the Bible says, blessed are those who walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, or sits in the way of the scornful. See, the counsel here is not an evil group of people. It is those who will give you counsel that is not in line with your destiny. So you have to get around people that socially support you in your destiny. Married couples should be hanging out with married couples getting support from each other. A single person cannot give you counsel about your marriage. Can't. A divorced couple cannot give you marriage counseling about how to operate your marriage. Won't work. A psychologist, although he'll have stats and and figures in front of me, could not tell me why I was using drugs. Could not do it. I had to explain to him how it drove me to use narcotics and drink alcohol. He had facts, he had stats, but he had no experience. No experience. Listen, let me just leave this with you. Once you get into the realm of understanding success, success becomes contagious. It really does, right? Commit your plans to the Lord. This is what I read. I don't know about what you read. But it says, commit your plans or commit your ways to the Lord, and your plans will be, help me, successful. You want to be successful? Get around people whose end is something that you would like to see. Their end, not their beginning. They've had a rough road. What did the end look like? I want to see that. All right. Social support is needed. Number three, spiritual support. AJ's getting ready to cock that hand back and throw. I know, bro. I see you, man. Biting that shirt. You ever know when people start to get nervous? Like, really? Does Pastor really want me to throw this bottle? He's like really starting to think now because it's getting in that lock. It's getting in like that 22-minute mode right now. He's starting to bite. He's like, mm, Pat, Pastor Paul, where's he going to be? I want to line him up. I see you, bro. Right here. It's coming down. Spiritual support. Let me tell you something about this. <clears throat> Every family is dysfunctional. I didn't hear an amen, but you need to be saying amen. Listen, every family has some type of dysfunction. Thank you. Every one of you. Invite me over for a couple hours, and I'm going to see some dysfunction. I'm going to invite you to come over to my house. You're going to see some dysfunction. Every family has dysfunction. Can we be real in the house of God today? When crazy met crazy, and then we had three crazies, then we have a whole house full of crazies. Oh, it's 25 minutes. It's right on time, bro. I needed a drink. (laughs) Everybody has secrets. Everybody has secrets. I see some heads nodding. That's an agreement. You see, what what happens is that when the crazy comes out, the secrets become revealed. That's the reality, is that those secrets that are hidden down in there, when crazy starts letting loose, those secrets start to pop out. The young people today, they... um, We have no secrets to tell. I'm as real as I can be. And so they hit the story on Snapchat, and they hit the story on Instagram, and they Facebook, and they tweet. See how real I am right there? But when you get to them face-to-face, they ain't so real. 
They're faking it until they're making it. That's, that's the reality, all right? Um, <laughs> this world really does crack me up. What is real? What is raw? What is honesty? What is trust? Who can we trust? Foxes have holes. Birds have nests. But our problem is that when we are at a time when we are tired, that we have no place to lay our head. We're at a time where we're weary, we have no place to lay our head because our homes are a wreck. And so we start saying things, I can't lay my head on my children because I got issues. I can't lay my head on my wife because we got issues. And I can't lay my head on my husband because we got issues. And I can't lay my head on my parents because we got issues. And I can't lay my head here. And, and, and so we find out what Jesus meant when he said, foxes have holes and birds have nests, but I got nowhere to lay my head. I got no, no place to rest. I have no place to, to hang out and to interact. I, I got no place to do that. And you wonder why you can't sleep at night. And you're tossing and you're turning and you're agitated and you're irritated and you're frustrated and you're confused and you're stressed out and you're depressed and you're sick and you're anxious and you're in a panic and you're moody and, and all these things start to settle in and you have, a, you have a battle to fight and I have a battle to fight. We have a mission to go on and we have a, a place, we have no place to, to lay our head. And so when a mighty warrior, man or woman, doesn't really matter, the place of rest oftentimes becomes the lap called Delilah. And it's not because she's sexy, it's because I had nowhere else to lay my head, so I'm just going to rest right here. And then a little sin comes in, and I got nowhere else to lay my head. And so that's why counselors make hundreds of dollars per session. It's because people know that they can come into an office and they can rest. And they can let it loose, and they can talk, and they can chat, because they've found somewhere to, to lay their head. But I'm grateful today to, to know and understand that Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus does that for us. He does that for us. And so... You need to understand that when you invite Jesus into your home, that your home can be a place of rest because he is present in your home. And you can be at peace, and you can experience healing, and you can, you can experience joy, undoubtedly full of joy everywhere that you go, you know. Family is supposed to be the place of unconditional love. That's what it's really supposed to be. The place of unconditional love, it's the one place that everyone should have the right to Every person should have the right to family. Every, every person should have the right to, to have this experience of rest. It ought to be the place where we can go when the whole world rejects you. I want you to know that I love you. And it doesn't matter. I love you straight and I love you gay. I love you crooked. I love you confused. I love you broken. I love you addicted. It doesn't matter because when he interjects that love in me, then I'm able to cast that love onto you. And so I'm resting in the arms of Jesus knowing that he's got your best interests in hand. And when your relationships are broken and your children are abandoned, I'm going to pray for you because I love you. And that's what kind of Jesus is signifying here when he says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest because I love you. I love you so much that I was willing to send my son to die for you. And I love you just so much. And I want you to know this, that not only does Jesus invite you to come into his arms, but Jesus is standing right here, right now. And he's ready to, to, to step right into your life. His spirit of the living God is alive and well, and he's here right now to give you that rest in your homes. Do you know how many millions of people are going to walk into their homes that once used to be in this next week? Homes that are now into the Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico personal belongings, things like that, it thrown into the depths of the ocean, man. It wasn't but five and a half years ago where Sandy came and we experienced that same disaster right here. 
Houses can be ripped off the foundation. I love the phrase my entire life. I used to love this. Home is where the heart is. Where's your heart? Is your heart seeking the things above or is it seeking the things below? I don't know about you, but I can't wait to be with Jesus. Because I'm going into a mansion that will never be destroyed by wind, by rain, by tornado, by fire. Never be destroyed. That tent will never be destroyed. You know, when we go on vacation and you look up the hotel location, the resort, the place that you're going to stay and you start looking at it together. And you're like, man, we've got to go to this spot right here. This is the spot we're going to right here. Look at this. It's got a jacuzzi in the room. It's got a hot tub. It's got, look at this shower. It's crazy. Look at these beds. Serta mattresses. Crazy. Look at this place. Look at the environment. Look at all this stuff that we're going to experience over seven days. Look at this stuff. If you can just get a glimpse of that and turn that into an eternal perspective and say, man, I can't wait to get there. Lord, I can't wait to spend time with you, man, like face to face. Jesus walking around the, ga the, the, the gates, walking around the streets of gold, walking around with Moses and Aaron and, I mean, Think about this stuff, man. Think about the outlining and the, and the underlay and all that stuff. When you go home today, appreciate what you have been given. I don't care if it's a vase. Appreciate all those things that God has supplied for you. Most importantly, connect with each other. Spend time with each other. Love each other. Be solid in your family and enjoy your life together because you don't know how quickly life passes us by. Enjoy it. Be solid in your family, man. Be solid. Okay, I got to be done. Stand to your feet and let me pray for you right now in Jesus' name. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every household of faith in Jesus' name. I thank you for the struggles. I thank you for the trials. I thank you, God, for the failures. I thank you, Lord God, for the mistakes, the mishaps. I thank you for the arguments. I thank you, God, for all of those things because it has prepared us to be solid in our family. Lord, I'm asking you right now, to bless every household right now in Jesus' name. Let conversations be different. Let the atmosphere be different. Let the play be different. Let the interaction be different. God, I'm asking you that we would be a, a light into our neighborhoods, Lord God. That we would be, our children would be light in the schools, light on the ball fields, light in the church, light in the community, God. God, that our relationships, husband and wife, God would be a beacon of light. Lord, like Dina said earlier this morning, that we would have the essence, the aroma of God, that wherever we go, Lord God, we will be recognized by our fruit, Lord. And I pray that in these latter days, God, as we prepare for, for Jesus to come to get his bride, Lord, that we will prepare our homes for the coming of the Lord. We will prepare the church for the coming of the Lord. God, I thank you right now for what you're doing and what you're able to do in every home. God, we bless you. We magnify you. We worship you. We are thankful right now for our families. We are thankful for right now for our marriages, our children, our occupations, all the necessities that you have provided. We don't overlook them, God. We are thankful for them right now, Lord. We are thankful, God. We bless you. And Lord God, we desire, God, to be solid in our families. God, we honor you. We thank you. God, I pray your continued uh, protection over Florida right now, Lord God. God, put your hand along the coast, God, of Florida right now, Lord God, and preserve the waters, Lord God. Push them back with your amazing ability. God, blow upon that wind, Lord God, that windstorm right now. God, blow upon that hurricane 
and push it out a little further, God. We thank you, Lord, for decreasing its size and answering our prayer, for bringing it down to, from a five to a three. God, that's amazing, Lord. God, you spared so many cities because of it. You shifted it, God. Lord, I pray for restoration. And I pray, Lord God, for families that will go into these heart-wrenching moments. God, that you'll be with them. Let them know, God, that beyond of a shadow of a doubt, your provision is clear for the home. God, I thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. Hallelujah.